Thank you all for being here. It is my honor, my pleasure to be here this morning to talk with you about the Rockford Park District Public Art Collection. Um, I'm a little choked up after Candy's uh, speech. That was really, really um, impactful to me um, because we too have an incredible uh, opportunity in our community with public art, just as she has shown in her community. We can do it here too. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why public art is important to our community, and then I'm going to introduce you to those pieces that you've probably been driving by for many years and not knowing how the story is that they came about to our community. Um, public art. When we look at the infrastructure of our community, police and fire and all those things that are very important to our community, you might wonder why public art is important to our community. We also know that quality of life is critical to all of us. Uh, when you look at those things that make a community stand apart, public art is part of that. It's a tangible reflection of the quality of life that we have in our community in addition to our beautiful parks and our other opportunities here. When we have public art, when we have beautiful parks, it gives us a positive feeling about our community. It also gives a, per, a, a perception of safety, uh, that the community cares about itself. It makes people wanna come here, work here, play here, and learn here. Quality of life is cited as one of the top three reasons that businesses relocate to a community, so we also are an economic driver in terms of uh, improving our community experience. The other thing I think public art does is it levels the playing field for art. I don't know about any of you, but I have been to art museums and I'm looking at a piece and I'm wondering what in the heck is going through the minds of that artist and the person standing next to me is talking about the beautiful expression of color and I'm thinking, oh goodness. I think public art really gives us an opportunity to step back, look at a piece in a beautiful natural setting, look at it upside down, look at it from every angle and think about it. And it levels the playing field for art takes away that intimidation factor. Art can also serve as a function. And I wanted to give this an example. Um, a community that I travel to quite frequently is Bend, Oregon. And they have really embraced the concept of roundabouts. They have over 20 of them. They have a local group of volunteers that raise funds to place public art in their roundabouts. So much so that they have created this roundabout art tour. I was there last weekend and I was meeting a friend for breakfast, and he said, I'll meet you at the Victorian. He said, you know the one, it's by the Flaming Chicken Roundabout. I knew exactly what he was talking about, and that's the Flaming Chicken Roundabout. It's a kinetic piece, it flows in the wind. We happened to be embarking upon our first major roundabout in Rockford at Maine and Auburn. We are blessed to have a, uh, a sculpture, a monument, right there at the corner, so who knows? Maybe that's the start of our public art uh, in our roundabouts in Rockford. Love it or hate it, art most definitely invokes emotion in people. You wonder what was going on in the mind of the artist when they created the piece. It sets the tone for the experience that you're going to have where that piece of art is placed. And there's no place that that is more evident in this piece called the juggler. Now the juggler is a piece that welcomes you as you come to the Discovery Center Museum. It was created by a Rockford native who now lives in Iowa. His name is David Foster. It's a kinetic piece, it's steel. It is aluminum, it blows in the wind, it's got bright color, and if you've ever been to the Discovery Center Museum, there is a lot of movement, a lot of color, and a lot of laughter. And you could probably get that indication from the piece that greets you at the door. As I was preparing for our talk this morning, one of the speaker tips was to keep it real. And so I thought I, I would confess right now, I am not an artist, I was not an art major. If you ever had me on your Pictionary team, you'd never pick me again, because you would not be able to figure out what I drew. But my experiences at the Park District have led me to love public art, and I want to tell you a little bit about that story. Um, 24 years ago, <laughs> I was the liaison with the maintenance team who were working with our Art in the Parks Committee, which I'll talk about in a little bit, that were starting to place public art in our parks. So the guys had to prepare the site and would assist with the installation. So we get the drawings to review those pieces, and we had a piece, I'll never forget, it came in, and the guys came and said, you're not gonna believe this, Jody. This is two poles stuck in the ground. One's got a deer head on it, one's got a fish head on it. Somebody calls this art and somebody's gonna pay for this? Are you kidding me? Well, I had the opportunity to meet Bob McCauley. I don't know if anybody knows Bob. Bob was the director of the art department at Rockford College. And he was creating a piece that he said had everything to do with the location in which the piece was going to be located. It wasn't two poles in the ground, it was two totemic sculptures. 
They're beautiful, they're copper. One features a sturgeon, one features a white-tailed white, uh, deer, and they symbolize the abundance of wildlife that comes together when two bodies of water meet. Inlet markers is actually installed back in 1990 down on the rec path, and it is right where Spring Creek and the Rock River meet, exactly where that abundance would come together, and the whole thing makes sense. These two pieces are now, they're copper, they're totemic, they um, arise out of the ground very simply and elegantly. They are naturally patina, so they blend in with the, the surroundings. You may notice them, you may not, but that's the beauty of public art. So the next time you're on the rec path, watch for inlet markers. We do, in Rockford, have an extensive public art collection. And as I've said, you've probably driven by these a million times not knowing what they were. Most of the pieces have been donated by people in the community. We're very, very blessed by their generosity. The Rockford Park District has a very close relationship with the Art Museum, who assists us with the collection. We have 31 pieces in the collection in total, and 16 of those pieces start at the Rockmen on the south and end at the Flame on the north. The Art in the Parks Committee was instrumental in really bringing art to our parks. They started in the late 80s. They raised funds to put uh, public sculpture in our parks. They donated three significant pieces we're gonna talk about today, including the Rockman Inlet Markers and Sightseeing. They continue to be in the community. They support, they advise, they counsel, they assist the park district when people want to donate art to us, and we are forever grateful for that concept that they started all those years ago. The first piece that was actually placed in public parks is called Cape Variations. It was placed back in 1973. It is an aluminum piece and it's significant. It's 44 feet long. It was donated by a festival group back in 1973 in one of our parks. And I'm wondering if anybody knows where this piece was and who the group was. Anybody? Beattie Park. Beattie is. And it's been there since 1973. What you need to know about this piece is John Henry is a significant public sculptor. He has pieces all over, over the world, over 2,000 pieces. And when you start to learn more about our public pieces in the parks, as you travel about, you're gonna see pieces and you're gonna say, I wonder if that's John Henry. This happens to be one, it's called Bridgeport, and it is in Chicago at the Thompson Center. And you will find yourself, as you become more aware of the public art we have in our community, seeing these pieces all over the United States in very big cities, and guess what? We're lucky enough to have those pieces right here in Rockford by that very same artist. Another piece that's significant and we're very proud of is called Suspended Motion. Suspended Motion was actually created by Gene Horvath and he is a local artist. Gene did pass away a few years ago but we are blessed to have seven of his pieces in the public uh, collection. This piece was actually commissioned by the Coolers for the 10 year anniversary of the Engel Corporation. They sold the property and they needed a place for the sculpture and we are blessed that they came to the Park District and said, hey, we'd like to put it on Park District property. And we said, sure. Um, it was placed there in 2004, well before the conservatory was complete, but now it is a piece of the puzzle that looks like it belonged there all along and it is a significant welcome to the Mississippi Riverfront. This piece is a, a rather sizable piece, 5,200 pounds, 16 feet tall, great welcome to a beautiful area. Another really fun piece, and I picked this piece because Ed was from Purdue, but it is called Animotive Kinetic. It's by Bob Mangold. Bob is out of Denver. He has works from Denver to Tokyo and everywhere in between, and he does a lot of the kinetic work that you see, and again, that moves in the wind. Um, this, this is an example of what we have in Rockford. It was donated by Tom and Darlene first. Tom and Darlene actually purchased this piece to put in their yard. He, Tom tells the story of his children, his grandchildren, and people driving by to see the piece. When they sold the property, Tom and Darlene uh, came to the Park District and wanted to donate it to the Park District. We put it in front of the conservatory to welcome people to the Sinisibi Riverfront. It is kinetic, it brings a sense of fun and whimsy, it blows in the wind, it's a beautiful piece just to sit on the bench and enjoy. Um, Bob does work uh, that's in color, some of it's stainless. This is a piece in Pickett Park that is at Purdue University. So again, we have pieces that are all over the world, so as you're traveling about, you see a piece that looks similar to this, it's probably something done by Bob Mangle. One of the most popular pieces we have in the collection is called Sightseeing. It's by J. Seward Johnson. 
This piece was actually placed back in 1991 behind the public library. And unfortunately, we had uh, some challenges with vandalism. And we had to remove the piece from that location that was originally selected. This was donated by the Art and the Parts Committee um, some years ago. And as I talked about the roundabouts, we are now uh, calling the garden in which the sightseer has been placed at the Sinisippi Riverfront the sightseeing garden. Again, identifying that art with a location. Um, the sightseeing is creating some problems for us down at the conservatory already. If you are aware of all of the action that's going on down there, we've been under construction for a couple of years, and the outdoor gardens are just in the process of being completed, but they're still under construction. And so we had some people coming and visiting the conservatory uh, this past year, and they wanted to go out in the gardens. And we said, I'm sorry, it's a construction zone. You can't go out. And the, the customer became a little bit aggressive with our staff and said, well, that guy's out there. <laughs> They're that lifelike. Um, Jay Seward Johnson is a, a famous international sculptor. Um, he has a piece that recently left Chicago, and I wonder if anybody knows what that one was. Marilyn. He did the Marilyn piece. Uh, she stood 26 feet tall, and she was downtown in Pioneer Court on the Magnificent Mile. She did bring some controversy with her. She did bring some vandalism with her, and she's on her way now to Palm Springs. But Seward Johnson is really known for his lifelike, life-size bronze pieces. And the piece we have sightseeing is a multiple. And I'm told there are three of them. One of them is in Key West, Florida. So if you're there and you see sightseeing, it's not been stolen. <laughs> it's a multiple. There are three of them. Another piece that we have in the collection that is uh, a new addition to the collection is called Wildflower. And this piece was created by uh, he was a Chicago artist, Jerry Peart. Jerry actually came to Rockford. He was commissioned by an anonymous donor for the conservatory. He was selected because of his colorful work. Uh, we wanted something that created a sense of a pop of color to encourage people as they were coming to the conservatory to kind of give them a taste of what they were going to see when they got into that exhibition house. So he came to Rockford before the conservatory was even constructed, and he created this piece that he named Wildflower, and we think it's absolutely perfect, and it is that splash of color that we were hoping for. What's really neat about this piece and Jerry's work is that color. It's whimsical, it's fun, it's powerful. When you look at this piece, because of the way it's placed, any way that you go around that planter that it is placed, it looks different. So the top picture I have there is from the parking lot, and I'm looking north. And you can see that that's got sort of a round, uh, kind of a round shape to it. The other uh, photo on the bottom is I'm standing at the front of the conservatory. You see the little cockadoodle-doo on the top, and you see a whole different uh, look to the sculpture. It's completely different. This piece has been in place since November of 2011. And again, now you're no, you know Jerry's work. Jerry does very colorful aluminum sculpture. And these are two pieces that you might be familiar with, or as you're traveling, you might see but you're gonna know it's Jerry's work. First one is Blue Geisha, and Blue Geisha was commissioned by the late Lee Miglin for uh, Triangle Plaza near O'Hare Airport. 37 feet tall, that, that piece is. The other piece that I, I have selected for the presentation today is called The Garden. It's at the Carillion, it's in Charlotte, North Carolina, and again, when you see these pieces, you'll now know that this is Jerry's work, and guess what? We have it here in Rockford. Very, very neat. As I'm wrapping up here, I'm gonna close out with two of our most popular pieces, and the first is the Rockman Guardians. The Rockman Guardians are very popular. You probably have a coloring sheet that your children have done at school, or it's featured in a calendar that you have. Um, they are created by um, Milwaukee artist Therese Agnew. Therese Agnew is a short little girl who carries a big, big punch. Um, these two pieces, two of the pieces came in 87, two came in 88. They were donated by John and Linda Anderson and the Art and the Parks Committee who raised the funds for them. They are referred to as the bike Vikings and the Transformers and the Gladiators, but they're the Guardians, the Rockmen Guardians. 12 feet tall, 6,000 pounds, rough granite, and uh, Therese actually created this with the assistance of many of our local labor unions who came together to help create the pieces with her, along with our staff, and uh, they are most definitely a Rockford favorite. And then their symbol. We have our very own Lieberman here in Rockford. This is a 47 foot tall, five stories of pieces, 17 tons of steel, made of recycled drums and metal and pieces. And actually, for those of you who may not know, the piece was actually located in downtown Rockford for many years. Um, the city had decided to 
uh, changed the concept of downtown. They closed off North Main Street, made it a walkable mall, and put, put the uh, sculpture there. It was actually created for Rockford. Well, people didn't like the fact that they couldn't drive through the location any longer, and they took it out on symbol. And as I was preparing for this presentation today, I was going through some no old newspaper articles, and there are stacks of letters to the editor. People were not happy. We worked with the city of Rockford, found a new home for Symbol, and Symbol has been down on the Mississippi Riverfront since 1984. And when I read back on Lieberman's speech when he came and dedicated the piece, he said he hoped that this piece would be an uplifting sculpture that would become the symbol of Rockford, and it was not when it first came to us in 1978, but I think we can all agree that it probably is now. It is the piece that greets people as they're coming downtown or heading north, and uh, we should be very proud of having a Lieberman piece in our community. Um, Alexander Lieberman has done work from, the the, uh, from New York to Russia and everywhere in between. He is a significant uh, public sculptor. If you want to learn more about our pieces, I've only selected a couple for the presentation today. We do have a sculpture tour. It's self-guided that you can get on our website, or we do have tours that go through the Nicholas Conservatory and Gardens, but I encourage you to uh, take some time and enjoy them. And as I'm wrapping up, you think about public art, again, thinking about our infrastructure, thinking about how important they are, and, and if, if quality in life is really, really important to us. The photo on the left is any town USA that has a recreation path along a riverfront, and it looks nice enough. But the photo on the right is our community. It's Rockford, Illinois. It's our symbol. So keep that in mind. I encourage you to explore and enjoy your public art collection. Cezanne said that art is a harmony parallel with nature, and I can't think of any place that that is more prevalent than in our Rockford community with the public art collection. So explore and enjoy. Thank you.